Hello. I'm Dr. Mila Mercator. I'm an undercover missionary to the marketplace. My topic today is the mark of godly leaders. Because those who are governed and those who want to govern must be governed. The validity of this topic that I pick is because God has spoken and it is written. So today I want to just um, steer the hearts of men and women who are going, coming out of the four corners of our churches and to hear the commandments of the Lord that says to us that His commandments are the boundaries of His protection and His protection is the guarantee of His blessings. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all His commands, the Lord said that I'm going to set you high above all the nations of the earth and all these blessings will follow and overtake you. If you pay attention, God says, you will always be on the top, never at the bottom. He will bless the work of your hands, bless you coming and going, bless the fruit of your womb. You shall lend and not borrow. And the Lord will establish you as his holy people and the world will see. So are we there yet? I think it's important for us to understand that the commandments of the Lord comes with guaranteed performance because those who are going to govern must be governed because God is a God of order as a part of that salvation package is government and the government shall be his name shall be called wonderful counselor the everlasting father and the prince of peace although it is not a requirement for salvation it is a result of you and me coming to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. It is who, who we have become. It's our very DNA that comes out of us in our operation in our business marketplace ministry. Because the Bible says that we know that we know Him because we keep His commandments. This is hell's best kept secret. They have taken it out from our public schools. They have remove it from the agenda of the top sermons in our churches. It is not hanging on our homes and it is not the standard operating procedure in our marketplace ministry. So if where you are today is not where God wants you to be and if what you're doing today is not what God wants you to do, when do you want to know? When we hear him say, I do not know you, it's already too late. So I picked the topic because the Lord has been putting that in my heart in our ministry operation because He has spoken all these things. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself any carved image. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. You shall remember Sabbath. Honor your mother and your father. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, and you shall not covet. This morning I asked the Lord, and the Lord told me there is no new update. It's still the same. So I have been speaking about this message for the last 40, 45 years. And the Lord let me understand what it is to understand that it should be a part of our DNA. So I have points that I'd like to emphasize today. Number one, this is not a suggestion, it is a command. In fact, the Bible says the Lord loves and is faithful to those who keeps the demand of his covenant. In the book of Ecclesiastes, after all the conclusion of all our talks and all our discussion, the writer says that this is the conclusion. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the duty of all mankind. So I think it really narrows down all our seeking of asking him how we're going to run our lives and how we're going to do our ministry. God has written it in his word. It says, this is the duty of mankind. Number two, because I, do not, I cannot uh, go further with that because it is written, we receive it, we partake it, and we operate in it. Number two, it is a promise that comes with guaranteed performance. It is an offer that's too good to turn down. You know, 
it is releasing the blessings of the covenant. God says, if you obey me, I will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all of these blessings will follow and overtake you. That's not my word, that's in the word. And you will be blessed when you come in, when you go out. Your enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. And the Lord will grant you abundant prosperity. The Lord will open the heavens, the window of his bounty, and pour a blessing unto you that you will not have any room to take it in. And you will lend and not borrow. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail if you pay attention. Understanding that promise, the Lord has allowed me to experience it in my journey in the marketplace ministry in 40 plus years in business, business as ministry. The Lord has showed me, I need you to understand what it means to be the head and not the tail, that you are going to influence decision making where you're at. You're not going to be a tail that they're going to drag around. I believe the Lord has asked us as a church as men and women in the marketplace ministry, that we are supposed to influence our culture, influence our cities, because that is the promise of the Lord. It is, after all, a God idea. It is God's plan for you. I know the plans I have for you, he said, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, and plans to give you hope and a future. It is so amazing that the world is doing a killing in charging God's people to attend their seminars and their lectures how to fulfill their plans. When God has said in the book of Habakkuk, write it down, make it plain, read it, run with it, watch it, because it is guaranteed it will come to an appointed time. You know, when I'm asked to speak in different businesses, meetings and conference, I say the same thing. The difference is I don't charge them anything. Mm -hmm. But the world is coining the word of the Lord and God's people are so hungry to listen to it that you and I have to do is open the book. Because the world requires your experience, the Lord will command your obedience. The world wants your best, but the Lord demands your all. It's not part of this lesson, but I kind of want to insert something. You know, the Lord did not really ask you to make him number one. Heaven is demanding that you and I make him all of our lives. It is an insult to the living God to find himself on the same altar with your number two and your number three. <clears throat> so, the Lord asked me, 40 years ago in prayer, I wanted to be in the ministry. I wanted to be serving in the church. I was surprised when he said to me to start a business. I don't have a clue about business. I spend all my husband's money, and all I wanted to be is marry a doctor and sip tea. And the Lord told me to start a business, but he said, I want you to have a track record of excellence. Because there is going to be a heavenly audit that's going to be done to you, Mila, Included in your report card is not how only how you earned it, but also how you spend it. Because part of this evaluation process is that you understand that it is my money is that yours. Because if you have not been trustworthy, worthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? If we haven't been winning souls today, then we need to have somebody audit our ledgers, audit our expense account, if it is going to pass the evaluation audit of heaven. God expects you and me to have excellent resume. It's a heavenly evaluation of the work of our hands because God knows your work history. God says when you go to this land, I want to be sure that you're going to follow and keep my commandments because so the land will not vomit you out. 
where I placed you, I need you to have an excellence. I don't want to hear you that you quit, that you're fired, or you have been removed because you don't know how to follow procedure. Because the assignment that I am giving you, Mila, <clears throat> is my calling, but your responsibility is to fulfill it. When he called me to go to hospital consulting business, I did not have a clue that assignment was so heavy, and so many times I wanted to quit. And the Lord told me, I expect an excellent resume from you. And so we prayed, and I have shared it before, that how the Lord closed an abortion machine for three years, the Lord dried the innocent blood from draining from that place. The Ten Commandments is a mandatory procedure that you and I have to follow. The standard operating procedure <clears throat> is a requirement for you and me to stay in the marketplace ministry. The length of our days and our longevity in the market ministry and our staying power is determined in how well we follow standard operating procedures. In the commandment says, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And the Lord has uh, let me understand the process of how to love and honor one another. Because honor is the seed that you and I plant to reap favor. And favor is going to open the doors for us. You and I cannot have access to anything and anyone we do not honor. Today, in the United States of America, I cry in my heart when I say, when I listen to men and women who doesn't know how to honor the office and the delegated authority that God has set into motion in this country. And it's sad to say, there are some professing Christians doing it. Because when you and I honor, we are giving somebody value. Value is the cry of creation. They're crying all over the place to value me. People of value are giving value to people of value who have been valued by that creator. It is a very important marketplace ministry picture because we stand like giants tall and the doors of the opportunity will be open for those who honors. Because honor, I always say, is a posture of royalty. You know what the Lord told me? All, all you have to do is to be royal. And when you show up, they shall bow. So his commandments are not restrictions, but rather they are boundaries of his protection. We step out of faith every time we step out of his protective boundaries. We remove ourselves from receiving the flow of his promised blessings. When we deliberately cross over the restricted area after reading the caution, the warning sign, we cannot expect the guaranteed protection of the covenant to be enforced. It is a non-covered area. It's an exclusion to the agreement. The if you obey, the condition of this contract, each one of us should read the fine prints, or I should say the bold prints, because it's an area we need to be so we can hear clearly the instructions of our Father. So we need to stay within the boundaries of his protection because again, his protection is the guarantee of his blessings. And point number three is because it's my dream for you, Mila. It is his dream for you. And this dream that I have placed in you is my dream and because it's mine, he said I will fund it. I was so excited when he promised that to me, because I don't like to go budget. Well, when he calls you and me to the marketplace ministry, or to the ministry what we're doing, we need to believe that there is somebody who doesn't have any limit to his budget. He's promising you and me, I will fund it. So we launched this dream 40 plus years ago with this promise. One of the many marketplace business men and women that the Lord has placed me, has asked me to cross path with, is Dr. Joy and Ramon. I want to mention that to you because we just lost him a few weeks ago. Dr. 
these are our spiritual children. Let us embrace the dream of making business as a ministry. We started our hospital consulting business. We started our financial services all over the United States. And we launched it to the Philippines to reach the Asian countries. And we said goodbye to Ramon a few weeks ago. Because you see, heaven's economy does not depend on the world's printed currency. The extravagant God does not have a limit to his budget. No crisis facing this world will deter the fulfillment of this dream. The cargo is too precious and valuable to be thwarted by the banking political system of Babel. Heaven, the heaven's economy is, is just a consequence, it's not the main event, it becomes a ministry. So decades later, the story goes, we're still going, and we are finding out and we are embracing that this is our inheritance. This is your inheritance. This is your birthright. Heaven has written the contract, his covenant sealed with his blood, the life of his son. Heaven is waiting for you to be willing and partnering with him with a signature to make this effective. Allow heaven to bless you today. Bless the work of your hands. As I always say in the marketplace, where do I sign? So we have been recruiting and signing a lot of men and women, and God has continued to promise us, I will go before you. You know, he's always promised this to me, Mila, I'm going to open the double doors for you so that the gates will not be shut. And just a few months ago, the Lord showed me what that is. After 40 years, maybe I was not listening, but finally said the double doors, Mila, is in Joshua 1a, success and prosperity. I'm going to keep giving you success and prosperity so you will have access to influence the gates of the city. So we continue because I am going to give you hidden riches. So you choose life or death. And we chose. So three books later, documented in the books of our journey, and we continue to make this promise of success and prosperity. And in closing, as we continue this journey in the land of the living, let us be reminded that when we all get out of bed to make our first steps of the day, our ministry has just started. Yes. Our homes, our spouses, our marriages, our children and our families, men and women of faith with a track record of faithfulness God wants. And so those who have ears hear, Hear the sound of the army of the Lord marching in the marketplace of the world to the rhythm of the Father's heart and gathering the harvest from the four corners of the city. So we call all Christian professionals today to join us. I want to pray in closing. Our Father in heaven, open our ears to hear and yield this to the sound of your voice. We be awakened, awaken us morning by morning, Father, that we may walk in the path of righteousness and carefully observe your commandments. We pray that you protect our eyes from the covetousness of the world and our minds from the pride of life. Open the doors, the double doors of success and prosperity, and let the gates continually be open for your men and women to conquer and possess the gates of our city. Give us influence in government, in business, in education, media, and science, and let us participate in the economic, political, global leadership. And Father, activate our dominion over land, sea, and air. And Lord, let us do business until Jesus comes and be faithful to you. Amen.